Welcome back to Sims Complete. I'm Matt Sims. That's Phil Sims. And this is the Sims Complete podcast. Where we're going to talk yeah. today about some quarterbacks, some quarterback play, uh, some positives, uh, a little a little negative, uh, just to, to see kind of, uh, or at least a mid-season battle, right, that a quarterback is going through and, and experiencing right now. Right. Uh, Big Phil, you got a busy week, though. You were off to Munich. Uh, Tomorrow. Any, Tomorrow. Are you yes. excited about your trip to, to Deutschland? Uh, I am excited about the trip. I got to tell you, though, I'm a little concerned about the weather because it's going to be cold. Okay. And the, and the high may be a 50. And I'm doing the game on radio, and it's it's open. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. going to be standing out in the cold doing this game. And when you sit there, it gets to 50. That's still cold, whatever. But, uh, no, I am excited. I think I'm really excited to see. I know that people won't believe this. I'm excited to see the Giants in person once yeah. again, and then I want to see Carolina in person. There's nothing like being there watching a game and you see it on the field. And hopefully, I'll be close enough to really get a feel for it about players. And I'll never forget the first game I ever did over in London with mm -hmm. Jim Nance. Right, Adrian Peterson was playing for the Minnesota Vikings, and after the first quarter. I called Christopher yeah. and said, oh, my God, I, he, he, Adrian Peterson, when you see him in person, everything you think about him, just throw it out the window. It, it yeah. was So, you know, and you know that, too. When you see guys in person or whoever, uh, it does change your thoughts, no matter how much you look on film. Did you broadcast the first uh, international football game with CBS over there? Do you, do you know about if, if that's true or not? I'm gonna say it probably. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like you were definitely doing it though, as when this for all this international started. first started. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, it was fun going over there, uh, listening to all the fans, uh, you know, getting in arguments about soccer and pro football. So <laughs> right. Was, you know that kind of stuff was fun. But the the fans and all the people we uh, the, I did the first game. It was in London. Yeah. You know, they couldn't have been nicer. They were so excited about NFL football. So take that. I don't know how many years ago that was, but that was a long time and to, <laughs> to where it is now. Right. And how the fans are reacting to it. And it's just it's it's going over great in all the places the NFL has gone to so far. It, it is cool that you were there for the the laying of the foundation for American football over in Europe and seeing that because I remember you coming back and telling me multiple times how, uh, yeah, hey, they might not know everything that's going on in the game, but. They were engaging. They were having fun. They enjoy the game, even though they're they're kind of figuring it out. And I think it'll be cool too to see your your reports from that first time till now. Uh, and also, this will be your first time going to Germany. All your other games yeah. were in London, correct? Right, all in London. I did one yeah. in Mexico City, but oh, I don't right, if, yeah, yeah. Well, I did a couple down there, I think. So that that was good too. I right. think over in. You know, you're in London, and we were over there. I think the first thing the the fans love they love the hitting. Yeah, you know, there's somebody running. You know, oh boom, he just gets you know, and they would go crazy. Right. But that so that and just seeing it. And of course, if you see somebody throw a football forty or fifty yards down the field, and it's right to somebody who's running really fast, you know, they don't get to see that either. Yeah. And so, so that was really interesting. But always the big problem, what say a fix. I think almost every game I watch is the fields. Yeah. You know, we got soccer fields, but now we got some 350 pound guys running on it. Right. And they're, you know, they don't weigh 175 or 100, whatever a soccer player weighs. And those fields were always an issue early, but they finally got that fixed. Yeah. That's a great point. And, and I think from, from what I've heard so far, at least just, you know, Germany is a, is a different fan and they seem to really, enjoy the game even that much more than what it seems like than than the london fan base uh or at least just like from what people kind of say as far as just how enthusiastic they are when they watch the game so that'll be exciting um all right so we'll talk a little bit more about the giants yeah and the panthers here in a minute but let's kind of go through our rundown of quarterbacks that we want to talk about and the first one we're going to start in a little bit of you know what does the future look like for this team and this quarterback uh, given the current state isn't, I mean, they're six and three, so don't get me wrong. They're having a good season, right. but it doesn't, hasn't quite looked the way that we expected. And that's CJ Stroud and the Texans last week, they play against the jets. CJ arguably 
has his worst game of his NFL career. He's 11 of 30, 191 yards. Uh, he sacked eight times. Eight. Ooh. Uh, yeah, just when you watch that film, big guy, w- what was like the most glaring thing to you of, uh, about that performance by the Texans? Oh, well, the pass Besides protection. The protection. <laughs> yeah, well, the fact that you – here we go. So people now on TV, they're not putting it together. Not not everybody. I don't mean to always say this, but I watch it go, well, you know, CJ's not having the year that he had last year. Hey, right. no kidding. Wow, what a great <laughs> – that's a great evaluation. Yeah. But missing receivers, offensive line, definitely struggling big time. Right. And he's holding the ball too long. You know, when you when you escape here and there, it catches the defense off guard. But right. now he's trying to escape so much that they're they're just running him down, and so, so that's a big deal. There, Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator. You know, you as you know, Matt, and we talk about you got to keep reinventing yourself as an offensive play caller in the NFL, and not enough of that. People are all over some of the routes and what they're doing. So there you go, and, and we see quarterbacks. We go, oh well, he's no good, and we now you un- it just makes you understand what can happen to a guy that we just put in the top five or ten of the quarterbacks in the NFL when your players are hurt, receivers, offensive line not that good, people are not open, and all of a sudden you start doing things you didn't have to do last year. Right, that's a good point, and, and I think what was interesting about the Texans Jets game from from last week, from last Thursday, which seems like forever ago now. But the offensive line seemed to run block well, but the pass protection was an issue. Would you say, you know, as far as the way Slowick calls the game, does he call it to protect the offensive line? Because, you know, that's something like we know that offensive coordinators have the ability to call the game in a certain way to kind of hide some of the blemishes that they have in the front line. Does he do that enough, or do they just do kind of just pure drop back passing and leave their guys on islands too much? Um, yeah, I, I think they do it too much. They don't. They don't just run the ball enough, and you know they got a physical runner and mixing uh, right. all that, and they are solid when it comes when you talk about the run game. And and look, when you're having offensive line problems at all, or receivers, not the group that you're used to seeing that gets open, no matter what the situation is, they right. know where to sit in the zone. They're going to be man-to-man coverage. Uh, so you got to make adjustments. And, yeah, you know what? You're not going to score as much. The bottom line, your yards gain and all this other stuff are going to be different. But you got to do what it takes to win. And I think they got to understand really who they are and go forward with who they are and not who they want to be. And who exactly are they in regards to that with their offense right now and just the way that they have been pass protecting, you think? Okay, it's it's really simple. Play to your defense. Okay. Right. They got a defense. It's pretty aggressive. They got some guys that's got speed and all that. Change your style of play. It's not dramatic. It's not my God, Matt. We just changed the play calls. You yeah. got all the plays in. We just got to put them in a different sequence. Right. And uh, so to me, that's it. Go out there, protect your offensive line. Most of all, protect your quarterback, protect your team. And give us a better chance to win by playing and uh, making our defense even better because we're slowing the game down. It's going to be a little quicker. We're running the football. We're physical. And we're not taking all the blows. Yeah, and I think they have a great role model in in that sense, too, with another team who uh, doesn't put up the points or or has the the yards and the explosive explosive plays, excuse me, like we, we think, and that's the Kansas City Chiefs, but yet they find ways to win. Their quarterback does a good job of distributing the football. Uh, now their offensive line play is much better and more consistent yes. right there. But uh, for them, yeah, they do have a, at least an example of that, of you can control the line of scrimmage by just kind of running the football patiently, high percentage throws off of the play action passing, uh, right. block them up. You know, hey, it's it's just a three-man type of decision. Uh, really for C.J. Stroud. It's not this full field stuff. It's not spreading out the field too much. It really is just making sure that you're controlling the pace of the game, and then you're right, allowing the defense to then just keep you in it with you know the one or two possessions. Another team that does that extremely well, too, is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and they're a team that, hey, they've had their injuries on, on the front line, and yet they still have found ways to win because they play to that same recipe that you're talking about for the Houston Texans. So that's 
that's really interesting. It doesn't get any easier, though, for the Houston Texans. Uh, they, they followed up here soon against the Detroit Lions, so that'll be an interesting matchup. But then they come back with the Dallas Cowboys, the Tennessee Titans, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. So uh, despite the Lions matchup, they do have some favorable matchups for themselves going forward yeah. uh, against some teams that are struggling. My last thing would just be, you know, really just be this. And I, I, as I'm talking, I almost forgot what I was going to talk about. Um, and I did forget. <laughs> I do this. I got so much in my head sometimes. It's all right. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. It's it's it was. Oh, I got it. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> the Detroit Lions two weeks ago. Yeah. I watched their game, you know, and the numbers were great. Running the ball, all this other stuff. And I understood why they ran the football so well or had to against the Tennessee Titans, because if they kept throwing the football, their quarterback was going to get knocked out. Right. They couldn't, they were, they were having trouble protecting against that one guy that Tennessee has that everybody has trouble with Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah. I mean, man, he was, and, and I'm telling you, it's like, you know, Ben Johnson just went, we got to stop this. Let's just keep running the ball. And of course he had great success running the right. football and special teams. And that's why they won. So, Really yeah. good adjustment during the game by them, and that's what uh, that's what Houston has to do a little more too. Yeah, and closing point for the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud. The, uh, yeah, and you you alluded to this earlier. You know, Bobby Slowick, second year offensive coordinator. Uh, now the tendencies and, and and what he does, it's a little bit more apparent to defense. It's a little bit easier to game plan for him. And really, it is his job to solve these problems for this offense more, to be a little bit more creative, to get some of those easy completions for his quarterback to protect his offensive line. And, and that, I think, really is uh, you know the next challenge for him personally as an offensive coordinator is just to kind of take his own game and thought process to the next level and play ahead of the curve instead of uh, you know uh, relying on what worked a year ago because yeah. those things are, are no longer surprising teams the way they did. I think a lot of people are on to the protection schemes. So you got to, you know, that's yeah. the one thing you remember. And I remember you got to have a lot of different schemes on how to block fronts and what to do, make calls and all that. And I don't think they've got to that point yet. So we'll see. Hey, they're smart. Got a lot of good players down there. Yeah. Get Nico Collins back in the lineup. I don't know when he's coming back or uh, I haven't looked at the injury report. If he's, is, is he out for a long time or is he coming back? I, I don't, I think he is on his way back. I'm not exactly yeah. sure what that timetable is, but I, I do think that it is like a week to week kind of basis at this point. Um, and, and yeah, it's been tough. I mean, Tank Dell has done extremely well, but Tank Dell, Robert Woods as being your one, two matchup in the outside. Uh, you know, it, he definitely needs a little bit more support in the passing game. So having right. Nico would, would absolutely be big. Uh, let's right. transition now to, Lamar Jackson. And, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Let, let's talk about a guy who is playing as good as football as anyone in the NFL. Um, I love when you put your glasses on there and they're always crooked. Uh, but Lamar, 16 of 19, 280, three touchdowns. Oh. Uh, extremely efficient against, you know, I don't know if people know this, but just one of the better defenses in in the NFL right now. I mean, we're talking about a, a top 10 defense in every statistical category from points, yeah. uh, red zone percentage defensively, uh, rush, pass, everything. Um, but uh, what is it right now that makes it so difficult to stop Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens and what Todd Munkin is doing? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, and let me, I want to get them all out. Designing yeah. other plays. Zay Flowers is a not a he's a number one, he's a big time number one receiver. Look what else they got to throw to over there. They right. go out and get more reinforcements. Why? And I and I learned this, and I've talked about it a little bit, Matt, on some of the th other things I do. That oh, yes, their offense is great. Let's go get something to help our defense. They go, well, nothing there really gonna do what we want. So let's just make our offense even better. In other right. words, add to the strength of what your team is. And I love the fact that we're not got Deontay Johnson. I think he's going to fit into there. It's another good, solid receiver that can make plays and all that. But it comes down, let's see, Lamar. I don't even know what to say. Watching them play, and I kind of, you know, they had a bad week. You know, I was all over them when they had that great game a couple weeks ago. But, Matt, they're in this thing. And I, I honestly, it, 
if they don't get to the championship game, it'll be a major disappointment. Really? Lamar Jackson gets great protection, but that mm-hmm. protection comes from what? The fact that you worry about him running and moving. Right. And his movements to buy a little extra time to find people, it works out not good. It's damn great. And, I, and, and I'm not going to overstate it, but he is one of the top passers of the football in the NFL, and he's one of the top throwers of the football in the NFL. Right. I mean, he just – he doesn't miss. You know, the, you you and I know when he throws it, you go, he threw it exactly the way he wanted it. Now, yeah. he, his judgment might be a little different, whatever, but physically it comes out of his hand almost – and he's got a compact motion. His arm is strong, and now we're putting all the movement into it. Man, Baltimore's offense, good luck, everybody. Right now, Baltimore is fifth in the NFL and third down conversions at 45%. First in the red zone, 74% conversion uh, for points for them. Points per game, they're second with 31. Uh, and, and you're right, passing yards per game, 254. And, and let's not forget, oh, yeah, and rushing, they're number one in that category as well with Derrick oh. Henry with 191 yards per game. Uh, so across the board, a top five. Uh, operating offense right now in every category and you know for what they're doing Todd Munkin oh it's, just it's, it's great it, it's a it's a little of everything and I think this last matchup it, it's a good indicator too of just how explosive and powerful and efficient they are on offense because we've seen team. Denver give teams tons yeah. of fits yes. and and they're getting after the quarterback they're hitting the quarterback a ton they're confusing quarterbacks, throwing into coverage, a lot of contested throws. We didn't really get to see any of those things to the Baltimore uh, offense at all. And I think that's because it is very difficult for Vance Joseph to scheme up looks to take advantage of Lamar Jackson with all the motions, with all the shifts and formations they have, with the different personnel packages, with, all the good with, players. The, with the speed and power they have on the offensive side of the ball. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, and then the precision passing by Lamar. And uh, I, I think it just kind of shows you that Baltimore offensively, we've always kind of known them as this defensive powerhouse, but Baltimore offensively really is kind of the cream of the crop right now of the NFL and their performance. No doubt. It's not even a question. And, you know, the Denver Broncos, there were parts in the game, the defensive line, they're like, why are we trying to rush the pass? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because it's doing no good. We're just letting him move around and make bigger plays. Let's just stand there and make let him make a decision and throw from the pocket. And I'm serious. I kind of saw it. And, right. And, of course, the deep, the defensive backs, who really have done a great job for the Denver Broncos, well, they had to cover the second route too much. Right. Quarterback moves. They, and you could see it just it, – it was wearing them out during the game. Yeah. And it was really impressive by Baltimore. And you know what? I'm not even going to talk about their defense and worry about it. I just say, hey, offense, put up 40. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. De- defense, can you hold them to 35 or 30? That'll be great. And, and I'm really being serious. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Their offense has got to carry the team, and it can't take weeks off. It's got to just keep going every week. And I, I think they can. And I, I really – I mean the things I said. I don't just say it randomly to get anything. I, I really believe that about Lamar, too. He just does not lose control of the football. Yeah. And defensively, do they have maybe that that game wrecker pass rusher that maybe some of the other teams rely on in the NFL? Uh, no, but they do stop the run. We we know that they're going to be a tough football team like every Harbaugh football team is there in Baltimore. Yeah. And, you know, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt to figure out some of the issues that they've had, especially with their pass defense and just having different looks and things of that nature to to help them create pressure as the season goes on Uh, but you're right their best defense at the moment is the fact that they are such a good offense and putting pressure on other teams to really just keep up with them uh and 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 that's that's an important thing for this football team when we know that that's their identity really currently right now and and hopefully the defense uh can kind of pick up some some momentum we now go to joe burrow who played phenomenal uh against um, the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, a team that uh, really is falling apart at the moment. And uh, we'll, we'll see kind of what, what takes place with this, this, this team from now even till the end of the year, but a lot of moving parts. Nonetheless, Joe Burrow played phenomenal. 
He kicked ass. Uh, it, it's so efficient. Five touchdowns on the day. One of the best pocket passers, if not the best pocket passer in the NFL currently. And we get to see these two guys uh, going head to head in this matchup. Uh, night, yeah. Yeah. What What are your thoughts? Like, should we see a high scoring football game on Thursday night? Uh, what are your expectations for the Cincinnati Baltimore Thursday night matchup? I think if Cincinnati wants to win, they better put the pedal to the metal on the <laughs> offensive side. Right. And, you know, now we got we got two different. We got the most precision precision passer and rhythm thrower in the NFL going against the other guy who's big time dynamic and everything running, throwing, uh, creating plays. Uh, so yeah, I think it, uh, it's going to be a somewhat high scoring game. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I don't like to pick games like this, but I'll be surprised if the, the, the Bengals can hang in there and score enough points to, to give themselves a chance to win. Because I think, Cincinnati's defense, Lou Anarumo, really good coach. But you know the old saying, you got a mule on the farm. You can run him every day. The damn thing isn't going to win the Kentucky Derby ever. So, <laughs> and you know, you can only do what your talent lets you. I cleaned that yeah. up a lot. You did. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. Red Shandy's um, baseball manager of the St. Louis Cardinals had these great sayings. But, you know, wh what are you going to do? And, and you know, we're going to try to stop the quarterback from running, moving around. Or we, it, it, you can't blitz them hardly. And if you do, you better catch them off guard. Because yeah. you said it earlier, Todd Munkin's pass game, very, I think, does everything. Pass protections are great. And, of course, they got somebody can elude pressure if they blow the, the blocking schemes or whatever. But I think Joe Burrow, you said everything. He needs to have one of those games against this Baltimore defense to give the Bengals a chance to win. Yeah, and, and the Bengals defensively, they they just been – They've played poor. They really have. They have not lived up to – oh, actually, I don't even know if they've had great expectations for their defense, but they definitely didn't expect it to be uh, as porous as it's been this season. Uh, the the one highlight I would say is that Trey Henderson is one of the pass rush, best pass rushers in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. Uh, a week ago, he had four sacks, single-handedly just dominating football games when he's lined up in one-on-one -on -one situations. And and that would be something that I'd be kind of shocked, honestly, if Munkin and the Baltimore Ravens even allow a lot of those opportunities for Cincinnati, for Hendrickson to have those. Uh, so we'll see if the running game can kind of wear out Cincinnati in their front and protect Lamar in those obvious passing situations uh, in this football game. But should be a good one. Uh, if you like quarterback play, this is definitely one uh, yeah. to, to sign up for. Uh, now we go to Bet Online. Bet Online. Oh. Basketball fans, it's that time of year again. The NBA is back from the opening tip off to buzzer beaters. Bet Online has you covered the best odds, biggest mm. promotions, and live in game betting on all your favorite teams. This season, every game matters. Bet Online has every stat, matchup, breakdown, and live odds to bet on during the game. It's the NBA, it's the NFL, it's the NHL. They got it all. Head to the website. Get in on the action. America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online. The game starts here. So, Big Phil, now we go to Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yes. Justin Herbert. Uh, or as you like to say occasionally, uh, Justin Bradford. Because uh, for whatever reason, no, no. it's <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yesterday. No, it, yeah, you got No, me. no. It was yesterday yeah. you were trying to talk about Matt Stafford and you kept saying Matt Bradford for whatever reason. But <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So Justin Herbert, though, Los Angeles Chargers, uh, what they did on the road against the Cleveland Browns, a team that we thought maybe kind of figured out what they were doing and, and maybe build some momentum with, with Jameis as the starter. And uh, that did not happen when the Chargers came to town. Uh, Justin Herbert was 18 of 27, 282 yards with two TDs. He was sacked six times. I mean, Miles Garrett uh, just went on a rampage for about four plays. Go ahead. Sorry. Four, four plays. Your your glasses are still crooked. I know, but I um, other than Miles Garrett, just domination at, at one point in the game where he got three sacks out of four plays, uh, the Chargers really did a good job, I think, of controlling this football game. They play great team defense. Dominated. Um, what What are your thoughts on Justin Herbert and how he has progressed in this Greg Roman offense? Well, it, it seems like it's. Uh just inching its way upward where we're going to do it all. Okay. We're just, we're trying to, that we got the run game. We're, we're tough as hell. We all know it. 
<laughs> and now let's give let's give the big guy a few more chances to throw the football. He's taking advantage of it. I mean, I thought he was um, one of his. It's not even about the stats to me. He made throws under pressure, and and it's not that he made throws to the flat. He's making thirty yard sideline throws. Yeah, with somebody hitting him and people up around his arm and everything. It's <laughs> that's what I find amazing. I know he's a big guy. He, I bet he. I would say he's. I'm gonna say six six. Okay. If yeah. he's not, he's 6'5 and uh, nineteen twenty or whatever. You know, it's, it's there. <laughs> yeah. But he plays every bit that big. He can move around. And his arm angles, he's got a little um, Stanford in him. He does. Right. Right. He can drop that arm. And, you know, they blew a couple coverages. He took advantage of it with rifle shots down the field. Yes. Uh, he's got wonderful touch. But if he ever had, if there's one thing I'd say, that Justin Herbert maybe sometimes in short passes, if he has to hold the ball and he gets a little pressure, he just throws a rocket at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it way too damn hard. And hey, that's but, something we saw Josh Allen kind of had this issue too early on in his career, even some points last year where he wasn't really sure what to do with the football. At the last second, he would just throw it so damn hard to a shallow cross or, or a check down in that situation. But you're right. I mean, the throw – uh, to Quentin Johnston down the right sideline on that's that broken it. coverage by Cleveland. You know, that's a play where uh, he's protected well. He slides out of the pocket just for a second to buy some time. They bust the coverage. Johnston is wide open down the right sideline. And there was no doubt, man, he rifled that ball yeah. and put it right on him. And that was uh, a play of 66 yards for the touchdown. But those are the type of things that that I think you got to be excited about for the Chargers because J.K. Dobbins, I mean, that's that's got to be one of the better stories in the NFL this year with all the injuries that he's gone through with Baltimore right. and how he has played for that team. Uh, and even just, you know, coach being a Michigan guy and him being an Ohio State guy and just being the workhorse for that football team, it, it's been really impressive. And you're right, the, the physicality of the team, nobody pushes them around. And, and no. that's what's amazing. They they really get after it on both sides of the ball. Well, come on. You know, you know, look, we got Harbaugh <laughs> and Greg Roman. I mean, come <laughs> on. Damn. They, they'd like to play back when, you know, there was, you know, those no face masks and everything. I mean, it, they're just about tough. Yeah. And it's it's come through the whole team. And I think they've actually left maybe two games out there they should have won. Yeah. But, you know, they're still trying to figure out well, how they want to manage everything together. They're getting closer to it. The difference between Justin Herbert and Josh Allen is this. Josh Allen throws a hard pass on short throws sometimes, but it's what I call a heavy ball. Right. Justin Herbert throws at the same speed, but it's different. It's easier to catch. For one, it rotates a little harder, which I think always makes it easier for him. And it's it's just not just that big, heavy thing. And I think you know what I mean. And for people out there, it's kind of hard to explain. But there are quarterbacks that can throw at the, let's just say, 20 miles an hour, the both of them. Yeah. But one is just a lot easier to catch than the other one. And Yeah. I mean, so. I guess it, the, the example would be just like a boxer. You know, it's like there's punches, there's power punches. But some some power punches, th their hands are a little heavier than others. And, and I think for, for these guys, like that's a good example of that. They got the Titans coming up uh, at 4 o'clock game. They're home Ooh. against the Tennessee Titans, so that'll be an interesting matchup. See how they play uh, against them. Uh, for for Justin Herbert, though, got to be excited about what you see so far. Got to be excited too for Chargers fans. The fact that Harbaugh has come in and really has changed the way you view this team very quickly, and it's all about the defensive side of the football too. Uh, you know, so for for red zone, second in red zone defense. First in points per game with only 12 points per game. That held true against the Cleveland Browns. They're fifth in third down percentage. So they're getting teams off the field. Uh, and they stopped the run. And, and they're stingy as hell against the pass. And all those things showed up against Cleveland. So a lot yeah, of good yeah. things happening for them. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. You know, Go ahead. But see what they do well. Yeah. All those numbers are great. But their offense is helping them. Right. You know, they, they it's not like let's go out and throw it fifty times. You know, the the offense helps their defense. Yeah. You know, maintains the ball, keeps runs, gets first downs, change field position, whatever it is. But it, it's we always hit. We want one to help the other side, and yeah, we don't. It, that's not always the case in the NFL.
But uh, and, the and, Char- and, Chargers do a great job of it. And we're being reminded again that Greg Roman is one of the most undervalued coaches oh. in the National Football League. What he did for Baltimore, uh, you know, hey, we're giving Todd Monk and all this credit. Greg Roman was doing some revolutionary things with Lamar Jackson there. Uh, and, of course, hey, did, maybe it got a little stale. They needed to switch it up. All right, that's fine. But here he is back calling plays again for the Chargers, and he has made an immediate impact for Herbert, for the team, and playing complementary football. So bigger than just, hey, running an efficient offense, playing, right. uh, designing an offense that fits the overall vision that the head coach has for this football team so uh, i just uh can't can't commend him enough for for the job that he does i this is all true you know i remember playing and i'm saying this because the chargers yeah it's it's like this john harbaugh jim harbaugh could say in his headset greg i need my defense to get some rest yeah what he's telling him milk the clock a little run the ball, keep the situations. We need a couple first downs to let our guys recover, things like that. That's right. complimentary football. And, you know, I had it said to me a few times, hey, you know, slow this thing down for us because, you know, whatever, the defense is actually getting roughed up a little today. So, yeah, and it's that's that's what you do. And and uh, the Chargers do it great, fun to watch. Uh, I'm quietly a little bit of a fan. I, I think I turned into – a fan last year watching Michigan football and hoping they would go undefeated and win the damn thing. I got to admit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was happy for the Harbaugh family and, and I'm kind of feeling the same way, about the chargers, I can root for a few teams in the NFL and I'm not saying I want them to win the Super Bowl. I just want them to see them do well uh, and show everybody. They're really who we thought they were. And yeah. So far, agree. so far they definitely have. You, you said it with Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Agree. Agree. All right. And uh, all right. So now, Let's get to Real Matt quick. Bradford, Matt, Matt Stafford. Bradford. Yeah. yeah, Matt Bradford. Dude. Matt Stafford. Uh, so we are talking Matt Stafford now. Um, and just what to think of this Los Angeles Rams team who is now four and four. It, it was ugly in the beginning. And, you know, lately, just the way that they played. First of all, Matt Stafford is so freaking tough. Um, it, it's just amazing how he plays the football game sometimes and just his fearlessness in the pocket. It, it's, it's tremendous. It's got, he's got to be up there as one of the toughest SOBs in all of football right now, especially at the quarterback position, by the way that he plays, uh, 25 of 44, 298, two TDs and interception. And, you know, it's, it's not like he hit every damn pass in the game close clearly, as I just said, you know, he, he didn't. But it's not about the numbers. It's not about the numbers for him. It's about just when there is opportunities to make big plays for them to stay in the football field, for them to close out the game the way they did in overtime. This guy always seems to come through for this football team. Defense did him a solid overtime game. Yeah. Short yardage, whatever. They stopped Seattle. They come back out on the field. Uh, and, and it's been a good game. I mean, he's making the throws. He's tough. You know, we say all that. He takes. You know, probably for me, he probably takes a few too many chances throwing the football because he does have that disease. Everybody's open. Yeah, I, yeah. It, oh, there's a window. I see it right there. Yeah, you know, that's right. I mean, it's always open. And just look at the overtime. Three plays, boom, bean, boom, touchdown, win the game. Sean McVay goes, you're my man. You know, right. it, it, I mean, what the hell does he think? Game's on the line, always at the end. Ah, oh, not worried. Our boy bring us through. Pretty and, much. But but the first throw could have been intercepted right in between a bunch of guys. Really way too risky. Yeah. But the second and third throws, that's why we're talking about him. Right. They were special down the field, guys running fast, and he hits them right in stride with the perfect ball, the ter- the perfect trajectory, everything like that. And we just want to give him some credit because he does this so many times, yeah. and, he, and, he, and of course, they won a Super Bowl, but he still doesn't get the recognition, I think, sometimes that he deserves. No, he doesn't, and, and this is a team that we were excited for, that that we think that they can kind of rebuild into being a contender again, 
Right. Uh, you know, and we didn't think that it was going to happen this year, but we thought that they were a team that maybe could be a headache for some others and, and really be competitive. And, you know, it's more so just the, the development on the defensive side of the football because they got a lot of young football players that are doing some good things. I mean, uh, Kobe Turner's playing really well. Byron Young, uh, Jared Verse, Braden right. Fisk. These are all guys in their first and second year in the NFL. And it seems like they have they have won those lottery picks right now with those players because they're productive, they're tough, they're physical, they're athletic, and they are guys that that have all the makeup of becoming really, really good pros for a long time for this defense. And, and we've seen them kind of show up here lately these past few weeks of how talented they are. Um, you know, Puka Nakua gets ejected because he throws a punch in this football game, so that clearly didn't help. And, and really it's more, I think, in this game too. You gave Stafford the opportunity to close it out late in the game. It was a little bit more so Seattle. You lost the game that I think Los Angeles took it from them. Right. Uh, but that being said, the Rams with Matt Stafford, if you give them any light uh, at the end of the tunnel, they they have the ability to take it and win these football games. Yep, they're a fun watch. We know it's uh, going to come down to the end almost every single game with them. They come yeah. through a lot. Uh, this will be interesting to see where they go. Sean McVay, of course, um, does a good job with, you know, Stafford. He knows what kind of plays to call. He knows what he loves. I mean, man, he loves these deep throws down the sideline. And, and the other thing is he is a great in-cut thrower where they're just coming across. Because of those throws, you got to be dead on the money. You yeah. don't want to lead them one yard too far because somebody coming from the other direction is going to wipe you out. Uh, if it's not perfectly just right where their hands are there, the guy, you know, trailing could do it. I mean, so, but he hits more in cuts than any quarterback I've ever seen. So. Yeah. The in cuts, deep cross is just like his, his bread and it's, butter. It's, oh, he, yeah. He's going to hit those uh, at a regular rate for big explosive plays. They got the uh, Miami Dolphins this week. Um, so that, that'll be a fun matchup. And we'll see too, just how the Los Angeles Rams defensive front holds up against Miami, who seems right. to be a little bit more uh, focused on running the football. Uh, of late and especially with Tua coming back so that'll sure. be an interesting matchup uh you know for those two football teams now we go to uh Drake May gotta give him some love man gotta give Drake, Drake May a little love uh Drake May big guy your thoughts on Drake May and kind of how he's looked or how he bounced back from you know getting a concussion versus the Jets and then on the road there against the Tennessee Titans I would say this, you know, watching him before the draft and everything, and, and I said I've already said it, but I'm just kind of redoing it again. Uh, it's I'm surprised. I, I, he looks so much better on the NFL field than I thought he would, and I don't see the hesitation sometimes and throws. Uh, it looks like he's letting it go. He's got a great presence on the field, and yeah. it's not about he's talking to guys, but I almost can see his personality and how the players like him. And right. I heard that when he finally got into the game, all the great things they were saying about him. You know, the I just after the game was over, the players, oh, he was, you know, this, that, and he's everything they want up there. Big, strong quarterback who could throw it no matter what the weather is. Uh, and of course, you know, the play of the week was that scramble to throw for a touchdown, <laughs> right? To take the game into overtime. I mean, it was I saw it live and I literally was almost laughing as I watched it. And uh, he did a great job with it. And that you know what that does? That just invigorates the team because right. they now know what, Matt? We have a chance. Yeah. He we can do it. Chance. He can make Our the play. can make some plays to win games. So right. that's, that's why we wanted to talk about him today. And good for him. Good for New England. And, um, you know, so it worked out well. Do you, do you like what Alex Van Pella has been doing on the offensive side uh, for him specifically, uh, Drake May, and, and, you know, allowing him to, to play as well as he has? Uh, Alex Van Pelt last year, when Joe Flacco was playing for the Cleveland Browns, he did one thing. Let's do some play actions. We got a few screens, you know, a little underneath stuff. But overall, we're trying to hammer it. Right. We're trying to get that ball down the field. And there, I think they'll start working their way towards that more and more because okay. I think that's Drake May's strength. The yep. fact he's big, he can move around a little bit. But and I think the one thing we did say about him coming out of the draft was he throws it downfield. That's the best thing he does. That right. and when he's on the run, when yeah. he's on the run, you got to you got to cover the field fifty yards down. 
because he right. he throws the ball, especially going to his right, awesome on the run. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah, Alex Van Pelt's going to get this offense where it's going to be entirely Drake May offense here as we go along. I, I like that comp, too, that you make with Joe Flacco and just what he did with the Cleveland Browns because, yeah, you you – always raved about Drake May and his deep ball throwing coming out of the draft. You thought that, right. like you said, just, man, this guy is special when he throws the football down the field. And, and what's exciting, I think, for Van Pelt and for Patriots fans too, is that all right, you had that Joe Flacco uh, precision passing down the field off that play action game, but he's a way better athlete and he is really yeah. athletic and he can extend plays with his legs. And another reason why you love his throwing ability on the run he was the leading rusher in this football game against the Tennessee Titans. He had eight carries for 95 yards. Uh, so, like, the guy uh, – and that was one of the issues we thought uh, the Jets were going to have when they were playing before he gets knocked out of that game with a concussion. We thought, all right, hey, the Jets are going to have a hard time keeping this guy in the pocket yes. and, and limiting some of his runs. Of course, yes. the, the one running play he has is where he gets hurt. But uh, Drake May's athleticism is real. We always like that about him and his athleticism. What's exciting, I think, big picture wise, and the thing that we were concerned about coming out is that his rhythm as he moves in the pocket and goes through his progressions with, with Van Pelt and what they're doing on this offense seems to be way sharper than even what we saw in preseason. And, yeah. and I think that's a sign uh, for Patriots fans to be very excited about for this quarterback because – Clearly, the repetitions and experiences are paying off for him, and the coaching staff is building an offense that fits him specifically, and that's downfield passing with a mixture of just his overall athleticism to extend play. So really, really good signs for the New England Patriots and Drake May. So excited yeah. about that for them. And they have uh, the Chicago Bears this weekend. So that, that's yeah. – yeah, in Chicago. Um, Chicago – Got worked against the Arizona Cardinals, so we'll see how that matches up uh, for for the New England Patriots there on the road uh, against them. Big Phil, all right, let's do it. We're, yeah. we're not going to go too deep into the weeds uh, with these. No, uh, see quick. Go ahead. The Jets. All right, talk to me, baby. Talk to Jets. Me. Jets at Arizona, right? Correct. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, first off, don't look at last year's films or anything before. I think the Arizona Cardinals have turned in. To, I saw bits of it last year. Yeah. You know, Kyler Murray now getting under center about, I, I think I read this stat somewhere, 30% of the time, which is, you know, astounding. But they're about this. They're they're trying to be they're trying to be the toughest team on the field. Right. I mean, I think it's really evident when you watch them play. James Conner, uh, I've never seen a running back that runs so hard every single play. Yeah. And he's not just a banger. He can get around people, make the right move at the line of scrimmage and all that. And I think as he gets the football, as he handed to him the first time, the second time, whatever, the third, he just gets angrier every damn run. <laughs> I mean, it's – it's. I, I'm being serious. I know. And, Ky and Kyler Murray, I watched one of their games on TV because, I, you know, the film sometimes you, we I can't feel – you know, sometimes a personality or whatever. Kyler Murray has bought into what they're doing. He's careful with the football. He's got, you know, less interceptions than he's ever had in his career so far. Yeah. Um, his decision-making is, honestly, it's too careful. Okay. Uh, because it, it, there's a few throws I go, just throw it. It's yeah. You're not going to miss it because the ball doesn't get away from him very often. Right. But they're tough. Trey McBride, the tight end, is special. He is. And Marvin Harrison out there is one guy, and I think it's Michael Wilson. I'm not sure. Is he the one that starts? Does he start with? I didn't. I don't write all this stuff down. But the Stanford wide receiver, I like yep. him coming out of the draft. I think the Cardinals last year, two years ago, picked him in the third round. So yep. they got they got pieces all over the field. And the fact they're running it and uh, they're pretty good in the red zone, all those things. Uh, so the Jets, the Jets – just be careful. Don't take if you take them lightly, you could be in trouble. Yeah, this is an interesting game too because a lot of people were saying, especially for the Jets side of it, that if they they have favorable matchups going oh, on the rest that. of the year, uh, okay. and, and I don't think anyone really could have predicted that Arizona would be a five and four football team that's leading the NFC West at the current moment, uh, that has a good 
road win against the San Francisco 49ers, a team that absolutely dismantled the New York Jets to start the football season. But they're a team that's tough as hell, like you're saying. Yeah, Trey McBride, Marvin Harrison Jr., like two superstars for them on that side. But the, I think the the heart and soul of this team, and, and you mentioned it, James Conner, Demarcado, and how he oh, runs. Yeah, Trey he's... Benson. We've seen a, a small, you know, snippet of him so far in, in his his rookie year. I think this kid is. I think all three of those guys. That's a really good backfield. We see it what is. Detroit's doing with their running backs. It looks like the Cardinals are almost kind of trying to do something similar with the style that they run the football. I mean, 213 yards against the Chicago Bears. Uh, and, and this is you know, Chicago Bears. It's a good defense, man. They, they've they played pretty solid defense all year. Uh, and for them to cut them up the way that they did was extremely impressive. So this is a tough matchup, I think, for uh, the New York Jets. Uh, a road game across the country. Five and four Arizona Cardinals. So it, it, this will be a really fun one to watch and really, I think, give us a good uh, – another example. Who, who are you talking to over there? Your, your the, mother. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Diana, have a good day. Give me a call later. Yeah. All right. I'm talking to your son. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See you later. Hey, so look, let me get this out. Yeah. You, you, we brought, both brought up Trey McBride. He right. hit he hit my radar about midseason last year. I go, who in the yeah. hell is this tight end? I remember you and saying he, it. You know who he is? Who is he? He he's Max Crosby playing tight end. <laughs> All right. I like is that it. A good, because if you watch him, he well, he's got the he's got he's got the tattoo uh sleeved up arm. So that that's one thing he's got going for him. No, I'm talking about <laughs> when he has the play, he runs into somebody, they tackle him, he gets up, and it's just it, it like damn. It, don't make it look so easy. Yeah. You know, so he's <laughs> his um his enthusiasm is really incredible as I watch him play. Yeah, he does play with great energy. Oh, he, he awesome. is he is just when he gets the football, it let's go. You know, yeah. he does kind of have that uh George Kittle like energy about him. Only difference is that I think the national scene hasn't seen him enough yet to really know about him. But hopefully great. the Cardinals continue to be successful. So the national uh, uh, you know, scene can really get a little bit more familiar with Trey McBride because you're right, he is special. Matt, that was a great way of saying it. Yeah, he's George Kittle, and it just a you know probably, I, I probably physically better than George. I Kittle think right so now. too. I, mean, I agree. Big run, and uh, yeah, you know they. That's who the offense and I think, is. And I it's know, the, I know, uh, San Francisco talks about like, hey, George Kittle and all that, but like you can see Arizona, they they make it about Trey McBride. When they yes. when they need to, whereas yeah. Arizona, uh, with San Francisco, I don't, you know, of course he's a big part of it, but I don't know if he's quite, you know, we know it, we think we see it as a, you know, as a fan base, but the Cardinals, they know Trey McBride is special. He is one of their guys, along with Marvin. Har Honestly, he might be one A, and Marvin oh, right. Harrison's one B. Yeah, yeah. he's one A. So right. we got Trey McBride. We were going to make this quick and look at us. But we, yeah, we can't keep <laughs> talking. We're all frustrated talkers, so we got to get some out. Trey McBride, <laughs> James Conner. Yeah, that and of course Kyler Murray. But that's what it's centered around. It is. And you talked about the running backs. Three of them. They're all impressive. But it starts and comes from these guys are learning or whatever from the guy in front of them, James Conner. Right. And it, it to me, my last thing, it, it's just amazing what he's done in his career. I remember going to Pittsburgh when he went through all of his troubles and health and everything. And yeah. I thought, well, okay, but the scene come back and be the guy that he is now out there. It it's it's I'm sure there's been stories about it, but it's a great story and almost hard to believe. So yeah, it good is. for him. And you know, good for the Cardinals, man. Let's let's get let's sell out the damn stadium. Get a great atmosphere, help the players, you know, yeah. things like that. So oh, you're right. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this right to the wire with the New York Jets. We'll see see how it works. Yeah, I agree. And the NFC West, really interesting. And, and again, they're at the top of the division right now. So, you know, they're I don't see why there's any reason why they could not win that division, uh, you know, which is how it is playing out right now. Uh, and now to cap off the show, yep. The New York football giants. All right, so. The New York Giants, you're flying over there to 
uh, Munich, Germany with them this weekend to take on right. the Carolina Panthers, two football teams that are two and seven at the moment. Uh, and, you know, for you, what are you looking to see for the New York Giants in, in, in preparing for, for this game, for the radio that you have this weekend? I want to see a team that is scared to the core. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so <laughs> scared. Like, this is this is this damn Super Bowl. Okay. We're over in Germany. We're both two and seven. The the Carolina Panthers, it's different. They're they're getting rid of everybody. They're in a total rebuild right, right now. And the New York Giants are not in that situation. So I think you know, the emotion we'll see. You win a game like the Carolina Panthers did. They only gained what about 250 yards. They gave up over 400 to New Orleans. Right. But when it, but I'll say this: Bryce Young made a couple of plays at the he end did. of the game to help them win. Right. And I don't know what the hell New Orleans was doing. You're, you're down a point. You know, we <laughs> it's fourth and three. We can't. We don't have a pick. We don't. No, let's throw a 40, 50 yard fade route one on one. That's what we'll go with. <laughs> God Almighty. No, I'm really serious. That was I, I know, I know. I mean, New Orleans, hey, we were all excited about their hot start, uh, but they have just completely fallen oh, off. Uh, and just, yeah, there, there's no sign of it getting better. And, and I don't really even know what – the best part about their team is Alvin Kamara uh, when he's healthy. And, and even that, I feel like just – they just can't get anything going. I have no belief really in what they do offensively. The defense, it's been what it is. And and that's why, yeah, everyone's on their way out there. Yeah. Um, you know, well, for about, yeah. Yeah. For New York, though, um last week against the the Washington Commanders, did some good things on offense. Daniel Jones has two touchdown passes, first one in the home uh, you know, this season, uh rushes for another where he essentially just runs over two defenders on the goal line there, uh, but still, still come up short. You know what? What is it about this New York Giants team where just that they can't like put it together? Like, what do you see on film when you're watching them? Uh, is it, you know, clearly the offense is struggling. What is it about the offense that that I think frustrates you when you watch them on film? They got to be one of the lowest. I'm not in. A, you know, I'm not a huge stat guy, but I'm starting to get into a few things because it tells me the truth. Yeah, they're not making big plays. Right. I mean, it, it, look, you just can't methodically every time drive five, six, seven, and a lot of that is because they're protecting who they are. Brian Dable is calling plays. He goes, "Hell, I got to run it in there in first down to get a second and seven, so at least I have an option." Right. And then you got here. He is running the ball in first down, and he's worrying about third down. Well, I got to get to third and three. Or what am I we going to do? Right. Just. Not separating enough when the plays are called down the field, not making enough of those plays if, if it is there, and just um, mistakes and blitz pickup. Um, oh my god, the pick they called against them down in the end zone on the touchdown pass with the tight end. Oh, that come on, that yeah. was absolutely ridiculous. New York should have called and go, uh, Sorry, we made a mistake, you know, that, that was really that bad to me, yeah, yeah, but you know, to me, that the offense. That's what I see with the Giants, that we just just got to try to – and look, I know they do every week. They, these these coaches have been doing this a long time. But they just got to find ways. Somebody's got to start making the plays. they got to design them whatever to make it easier on themselves. Then the last thing I'll say about Carolina, when you watch them on offense and defense, it is as simple as it gets in the NFL. They are running training camp plays on offense right now it's right. the basic plays trying to just help their players just play instead of think on defense they do not do a lot uh very not a lot of blitzing so you know careful coverages things like that but i will say this i watched two of their games pretty close damn they hustle right you know what i mean they really hustle like above nfl hustle it's so they feel the sense of urgency. I can see that on the field, right? Uh, they just lack talent. And the, the, the Giants, this is a must win for the New York Giants. I agree with you. I think it's a must, must win too for them. Uh, you know, Aziz Ojalari has been an awesome bright spot, you know, during this, uh, you know, tough few weeks stretch. Um, you know, Brian Burns, 
He, he's got five sacks in the year, 11 QB hits. Uh, he, he's had 35 QB pressures this year, 10th among edge rushers in the NFL. Wow. Uh, so he's, he's, he's creating havoc. Um, you know, Dexter Lawrence, of course, I think he might be uh, top in the league for, for defensive tackles with yes. uh, nine sacks this year so far. So they're, they're, they're getting the sacks. The one issue I would say, though, too, the Giants have allowed 142 yards uh, in the rushing uh, department. Uh, that's 28th in the NFL right now. Foy, five point, foy, 5.2 yards per carry yeah. there, Phil, uh, <laughs> which is last in the NFL. Uh, so that that's an issue that I have with this football team, too, is that occasionally I feel like some teams have have been able to slow down any sort of momentum the defense has because of big mm. explosive runs or you know above average runs. And then, you know, for whatever reason, despite their simplicity on defense, it, there there seems to be three or four plays every week where somebody is wide open in the secondary. And, and that's where I get a little frustrated, uh, you know, when I watch this football team is that there's just like, there's certain moments you're like, damn, like how, how did we let, you know, uh, one of the receivers from the commanders get so open on this third down situation? Right. Um, and it, it just, th those are type of things that, the pick, like you said, an offense. There's just always seems to be three or four plays on both sides of the football where they just haven't come up and made those plays. Uh, and, and you know, at this point, they've been close, but since yeah. it keeps happening, the truth is is that that's just what this football team is uh, this year at the current moment. So, uh, well, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, Matt. Look, they had a chance. They score. Yeah. Now they got it. They can stop them. You know, we got a chance to win the game against Washington. Right. And that's when they give up the big play that basically when it was hit, you go, well, the game is over. Yeah. Right. And they're going to hit a, a Lamade Zacchaeus on a, on a Zacchaeus. deep throw to the, to the top uh, of the sideline, to the home sideline there. I was proud to say, uh, afraid to say Zacchaeus because I was said, I'll screw this one up. But <laughs> right. you did it well. It, it's that. And here's the other thing that the quarterback, Daniel Jones, yeah, is getting hit way too much. Right. I mean, wow! I, really, the number of hits he's taking, he's probably been hit and pressured and all that stuff as much as almost any quarterback in the NFL, and that is going to affect your play. It affects the fact that you might have somebody open. We talk about these big plays, but we can't hit them because we don't give him enough time. Right, and you can say whatever you want when you see the hit coming. You got to throw the ball but protect yourself at the same time. You're going to miss some throws when you do that. Right. But damn, you know, you can't stand there and just take it and get destroyed. Yeah. So this, again, he should get much better pass protection against Carolina. Right. There's got to be plays down the field. And if they do that, I think they have a good chance of stopping a very simple offense by the Carolina Panthers. Last thing, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. What did you think of Bryce Young when you watched him play on tape? Really happy with what I saw. I thought he played really well. He got the football out of hand extremely quick. Uh, it seemed very decisive on film, and, and I think that's what was excited. You know, when I when I go back and check out uh, some of these clips of him and he's playing, you could see that the experience of watching Andy Dalton play. I think those few weeks and seeing how he went about his work and making his decisions and and cutting it loose and just trusting what he saw. You know, that was my biggest takeaway against the New Orleans Saints. I, I know it wasn't like for uh, big explosive yards and all that kind of stuff, but I think just the way that he approached playing the game of mm -hmm. here's the play, here's the coverage, there, oh, it's open, go, cut it loose, move on. And, you know, so I, I give him credit for the fact that the experience of Andy Dalton, and that's the cool thing, too, that you see. Andy Dalton is like right there yeah. talking to him the whole game, keeping him upbeat communicating with them. So you could see the type of presence that Andy Dalton, the veteran quarterback has had on Bryce Young. And I, and I think it paid off for him in that win over the New Orleans Saints. All that's well said. I would just say this, his size. I, I noticed it on, on game film. I noticed yeah. it. It's, it's a detriment to a degree. It is. Yeah. They got, they got to design. We got to get out of, here's what we do. We got to do more for the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, it, it's not a lot, but just do more. I mean, with almost every time going out there, you almost think we're going to give you a drive starter. 
throw the screen to the wide receiver. We're going to get five, and then we'll run the ball, whatever. Right. Just just more. And they're trying to move him around, but no, I don't think they move him around enough for me. Yeah. So those are just some thoughts, and I've been writing them down since I'm doing the game. And yeah. um, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, you look at things that you I probably wouldn't look at before, but since I'm doing the game and, and I see certain things happen, at least I got something to fall back on because I know why it happens. So that's yeah, and it, you know, and, and you're right. The his when you do watch him, the the size is, is a, a real thing. You know, yeah. the fact he looks small on the football field, he doesn't look imposing or physical in a sense where he could just take over the game uh, by any means. And, and that'll be interesting to see if that plays into the favor of the New York Giants, just because of how well their defensive line has played in obvious passing situations. So if they can slow down the run and really get some situations where they know, hey, third and long, we can get after the quarterback, that, that'll play into the hands, I think, of the Giants extremely well, especially since they just traded away uh, one of their best receivers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But good luck over there in Deutschland, Big Phil. Which, okay. You have well, fun. Yep. And uh, you to man. What? We're going there to work. I'm going to have no damn fun. We're going to work. Oh, Please don't give me that crap. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Mara is going to take you around Germany and say, Hey, here's Phil Sims. You know, it, he's one of our superstars. He's the man. Check it out. A retired 11 jersey, all of that. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, <laughs> John Mara, I think we're going to have. I mean, isn't now. Germany the location too that the New York Giants? Yes. Are yeah. They, so New York Giants games are played in Germany. So that right. essentially is their you know, international home team. So yeah, yeah hey, they gotta they gotta re-educate these fans or educate these fans on the history of the New York Giants history. And that that means that means you player. Oh, oh okay. Oh player. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like I'm well never mind. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm anxious. <laughs> I've never been to Germany, so I'm anxious just to see the landscape. I know the weather's not gonna be great, but uh just the people and of, of course everybody's been telling me one thing, Matt. It's like the first thing enough. Everybody's about, oh, you go to Germany, and what what would it be? I don't know the, the beer. I guess the food. The food. <laughs> I hope you like uh, Wiener Schnitzel or whatever. You know, like <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, so I go. Oh, I'm, I'm nervous about it. I hope it's it, it's got to be good. Come on, we're we're going to great places, so I'm looking forward to that. I, you know, too. <laughs> And I want to see – I'm really anxious to see how the fans react to the game too. Right. You know, I got a feeling it's going to be uh, good. You know, yeah. they're going to be excited to see this, and that'll be fun also. Yeah, so I hope go. so. I hope All so. Right. All, All right, right Big Phil, you the man. Good job right, today. Buddy. Thanks for Thanks. joining us as well, as always. This is Sims Complete. I'm your host, Matt Sims. That's Phil Sims, and we'll catch up with you next week and hear all about uh, Big Phil and his uh, Wiener Schnitzel experience over there in, <laughs> in, in Germany. All right, that's all we got. Sims Complete, we are out. Check us out on YouTube uh, at the Believe Network. Uh, we'll be back next week for more. See you.